So if there's one thing I learned from the Shenmue Online Tensei series, it's that a game can be unfair and do nothing but leave you at a disadvantage and still be pretty fun. You know, in Shemi Yami Tensei's case, it's mostly due to the unique characters, post-apocalyptic setting, and well-written story. Not to mention the awesome battle system. This game gives you the option of a new game plus. This essentially lets you carry over your experience, your items, and your teammates into a new save file uh, so that now you know what to expect and you know how to handle the challenge you know how to win the uphill battles and understand how, how to surpass the disadvantages right now new game plus lets you experience the game in a way where you're no longer on edge but rather you can feel comfortable and enjoy the finer qualities of the game without fear of being completely dominated by the unfair the unfair side of the game. Jesus, I just murdered that word. I just killed it in cold blood. This is very much what it feels like playing through Sonic Lost World. Maybe not to the same extreme, but the first time you go through it, it can feel unfair and it can catch you off guard a lot. But once you beat the game and you give it another go through, I mean, it's probably one of the best Sonic experiences I've ever had, you know? So that's why on this Valentine's Day, I've made my vow to profess my love of none other than Sonic Lost World for the Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> it's no use. Give up. Mitro, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. All right. Most people were quick to write off Lost World for 3DS. I remember playing it around when it came out and having frustrations myself, but later on I decided to play the Wii U version after beating Forces, and I ended up having more frustrations with the Wii U version of the game than the amount I have with the 3DS version. And a lot more frustration. I didn't remember the 3DS version being this bad. So I decided to get the 3DS version again and I gave it another chance. I came to realize I love this version a lot more than the Wii U version. You know, this video won't be a comparison video, um, you know, of all the minute points of why I like the 3DS versions better. Uh, I already tried making a comparison video and everything and I just didn't like the way it came out. You know, if you guys really want to see, if you guys really want to see every little reason why I think the 3DS version is better than the Wii U version, I can definitely make it happen. When it comes down to it, comparing the 3DS version to the Wii U version is like comparing Sonic 06 to Sonic Forces. The only reason I could play the Wii U version over the 3DS version is because of graphics. And, you know, which of course, you know, it's on the Wii U, of course it should have better graphics than the 3DS version. If you lose to me, do you realize that you're going to be a complete laughing stock? Right? I, I won't get too much more into that in this video. If you want a video like that, let me know in the comment section below. So I'm not going to try to convince you that Sonic Lost World 3DS is a good game that I'm not here to tell you this is the game that the Sonic community has, has, has been sleeping on and that you were all too quick to judge it. Like I mentioned with the Shin Mama Tensei series, um, this is a game that's hardest and not easy to enjoy unless you have all the lists and extra content, meaning essentially unless you play the game over after beating. This is a game for the cream of the crop, right? The tryhard, the elitist, and the people looking to experience a different form of Sonic. You know, uh, before anything, you should learn, and I mean really learn, the parkour and homie attack mechanics. You know, it's a bit different from how it works in a Wii U version. In this game, if you touch a wall, you'll go up based on the amount of speed you've gathered. You don't need to hold the run button when touching a wall, but you can also do that if you want. There's only one form of a homie attack in this game, but they gave Sonic a wind attack also to open up enemies' defenses, so instead of randomly guessing which homing attack to use, you can use either the wind attack or the homing attack, you know, uh, based on, you know, the, the enemy that you're fighting. And, you know, usually as you get used to it, you'll know right away which one you need to use. There is actually a tutorial stage in this game. Um, so, you know, explore to your heart's content until you feel like you can get a good hold of the mechanics. The parkour is very essential 
to how this game functions so it's something you'll want to make sure that you fully understand because when you do you will start to appreciate the geometry in some of these levels and you'll start to hate the geometry in the wii u version can i get it amen <coughs> it's from a race of beings called wisps wisps no wisps with a w i, I hate the word wisp i hate it i hate it i hate it next are the wisps right the level design was actually made around the wisps in this game which can be a gift and a curse um and that's because i think every wisp takes some time to master the worst wisp is probably lightning um and that's only because sometimes it doesn't detect targets properly but it's not the worst thing in the world this game's real generous with uh, extra love uh with extra lives and if you play this game and you know that the Quake Wisps exist, uh, then you might question why I think the Quake Wisp is the worst wisp. Um, and the reasoning is that unless you're talking about the extra stage, its practicality is very simple. It's one of the only wisps in history where you can change back to Sonic immediately after usage. Instead of waiting for the wisp form to run out so you don't accidentally, so you don't have to sit here struggling to steer the Quake Wisp, Switch back to Sonic and enjoy your open pathway. Just break a few blocks, go up that wall, do do whatever you need to do, switch right back to Sonic, just tap on that touch screen. It's real easy, right? There are even shortcuts in every boss fight, except for, you know, the final boss fight of Eggman when using the Wisp properly. Mastery of these Wisps will help you beat these bosses in mere seconds instead of minutes, making it a game of technique and you know, some easy S ranks for when you gotta rack up some of that material. You, you know what I'm saying? No way. I'm gonna get you out of here. I promise you, I'm gonna get you out of here. I'm gonna do everything it takes to make sure you get out of here. You don't belong in there. Now, unlocking the wisps are the weirdest part because every new zone unlocks a wisp but sometimes the wisps that are needed to enjoy a stage aren't available or able to be used the first time around what i mean is that sometimes it's just in the next area right so like how the asteroid wisp for windy hill act one isn't unlocked until the desert area or how the quake wisp for frozen factory act three isn't unlocked until Silent Forest. Hmm. But there are gonna be other times where you're gonna need a laser wisp for stages like Windy Hill Act 3, but you don't get the laser wisp until Sky Road Act 1, literally the second to last area in the game. Windy Hill, first area in the game. Sky Road, the sixth area. You have to go you have through to go six through areas, areas just to just unlock, unlock that wisp that for a stage, a stage in Windy, Windy Hill, Hill to be enjoyable. To be enjoyable. You get what I'm saying now? You get you, you, you kind of like are you under is it is it starting to rub in now? Why this game? You need to beat this game to enjoy this game. <laughs> Mastering all of the nuances of each wisp will take time, but trust me, you'll have all the time in the world uh, to learn the wisp when you're trying to find the red rings. The red rings are important because each area has red rings you can find in each stage. And when you find the total 15 red rings in each area, uh, all the way up to Sky Road, you unlock an extra stage. These extra stages all focus on a certain wisp. So mastering these stages will help you master the wisps themselves. When finding the red rings, it would also behoove you to unlock Supersonic as well. I understand the extra stages can be a bit silly to buy to blast doing it. And trust me when I say it, Supersonic is really worth it. It's really worth it. So, like Sonic Rush Adventure, this game has a material function where you can earn based on your ranking when you beat a stage. You can trade this material in to create items ranging from invincibility to running shoes to elemental shields like fire, water, and electricity to even special vehicles that can help you get across stages if you're struggling to get past a section. You can even upgrade Tails' workshop so that he can make better vehicles, but after a point this requires higher amounts of rare and hard to get material, so it'll be a real tough grind. As I did say earlier, you also get materials from boss fights, so learning the wisps 
and learning how to, you know, not cheat, but, you know, learning the shortcuts in the boss fights will also help you get materials faster, essentially helping you get, you know, whatever items you need faster, you know? So you can enjoy the game, you play the game to enjoy the game, to master the game, to enjoy the game even more. It's like, it's like a never-ending cycle. I prefer the real Raven. I said the real Raven. Perfection. Once you've beaten the game, unlocked all the Wisps, gotten all the extra stages, and even unlocked Supersonic, you are now in the new game plus mode. One thing that Shimagami Tensei does once you beat the game is that you unlock a hard mode, which essentially makes the game even more unfair. Uh, Sonic Lost World does the same thing. Well, the 3DS version does the same thing. It changes object placement and sometimes even the geometry of the stage to make it a little more difficult. Um, hard mode only gives you one wing to work with, so it like strips the ring of stages like entirely. I said strips the ring of stages. Strips the stages of rings entirely except for maybe one or two that you may find if you know what you're doing or if you know where to look. But essentially, you might as well just get used to playing with one ring. There are even hard mode stages of the extra stages that you can unlock by playing all through the red rings, uh, by collecting all the red rings. So, you know, you won't only have that one stage, you know, that normal stage, you also have a harder version of it so that you can master that wisp and the mechanics even more, right? So this is where Lost World 3DS shines. Not in its story, not in its initial playthrough, but when the full potential of the game is realized. This game has more post-game content than just about any Sonic game since Sonic Adventure 2. You don't need Supersonic to enjoy every stage, but Supersonic definitely helps. I mean, you won't be able to use Supersonic in hard mode, but you know, in normal mode, when you're trying to learn the stages, Supersonic is like really good, you know? Playing through some of these unique stages is just some of the some is some of the most fun I've had with Sonic, or some of like a different type type of fun I've had with Sonic. It's not like adventure. It's it's close to it, but it's different, and it's definitely not boost gameplay. So it's it's a different form of gameplay that you can experience when you're playing this game. And you know you're using parkour, you're using speed, you're using wisps. Uh, you know that were and uh, to to skip things that were like unavoidable before that were like tedious and unavoidable now you can skip them move on to the fun part you know and honestly it feels good you know the appeal factor in like that's the appeal factor in continuing to play this game trying to find ways to skip sections of the game not in like a speed running fashion where you're looking to get like the like the shortest time pass uh, possible which i mean you might get that way anyway but that's not really the goal the goal here is rather in a way that feels like you're reaching a higher potential with the game you know and you know getting a better feel for the level design it's not like sonic colors we're using like like let's say a wisp like you unlock a, a wisp later and then you come back to the stage the only, the only real thing that happens in Sonic Colors is that you go through the stage the same way, right? And it like it just lets you go through it a different way. Like you use this wisp, maybe you unlock one pathway, but you go through the stage the exact same way. Um, but rather, there there's a lot of times in this game where it gives you a whole new pathway in general when you use a future wisp in a previous stage, which is like amazing. Um, like in Windy Hill Act 1, using the Asteroid Wisp and unlocking that, uh, that Asteroid Pathway, it's like you pr you're pretty much in the sky the entire time until you get to that one last parkour section. It's like, it, it, for the majority of the stage, you are pretty much using a, a completely different pathway. So it's, it's definitely something new. But another way is, uh, another stage is in Frozen Factory Act 3 where it literally opens up the stage in a way, or at least I guess it makes it more linear in a way, where before Frozen Factory Act 3, which is the one where the snowball follows you and you have to roll a lot of snowballs around and you have to, you know, navigate around that uh, Xena's snowball chasing you because apparently she has a thing for you, 
or she has a thing for Sonic. And, you know, the pathway that you get initially kind of sucks. So it changes it from a 20 minute stage when if you're taking that pathway to a five minute stage once you unlock the quake wisp and you can go up that wall and you can go straight like it's just a straight away path into the next section like it skips a lot of sections and so it just makes you it just feels really good because instead of wasting 20 20 minutes or even 13 minutes like i tried playing the stage again i knew what i was doing and that stage took me 13 minutes to beat taking the normal pathway compared to a five minutes using the quake wisp so without the quake wisp it takes 13 minutes maybe 10 to 11 12 13 minutes around there i did die like once or twice to um a five minute playthrough where it's like it's real simple so you know i could probably talk about this game for hours because they really did a lot with this game and it's just something that like it just never struck me how much went into this game. You know, hearing how this game was developed with the people who made Sonic Rush and, you know, it, it, like it wasn't just one or the other. It wasn't just Dimps made them themselves or, you know, Sonic Team made Sonic Colors themselves. I mean, Sonic Lost World themselves. It's like this, the Lost World team and Dimps came together to make this game on the 3DS. And to me, this is just the better game of the two. But, you know, what do you guys think? Did I convince you guys? Do you guys still think the Wii U version is the better version? Do you guys just think Lost World is too slow for your tastes? You know, let me know in the comment section below. To me, I end up falling in love with this game and no one can tell me any because I know all the bullshit this game has. And I also know how to skip it now. <laughs> so now, now my love for this game is almost um, impossible to penetrate. You know, I've, I've fallen in love with this game and that's really the end of the story. So, this has been your boy, Sarnistro here, commander of the Robotnik Unit. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your time, and I'll catch you in the next video.